Hey, it's Game K. This is my episode 13 of season 4 Vikings Review. Now, when it comes to making any reviews on my channel, I generally like to go through different storylines, not the chronicle order of a episode. So I'll do Ragnar and Ivar, then Kattegat, and then Bjorn and Rollo. But before I start, I must say that this episode really felt like a big change in the pacing that we've got so far. Before this point, I felt like they spent too long before they really went out on the journeys and started exploring things, but finally we're into that, and it's getting really good really fast. From what I see, it seems like the pacing is going to really increase a lot more to be able to fit in the stuff we know that's going to be coming from the trailer into what we've already got so far. So let's get into this and start off with Ragnar and Ivar's storyline. We start the episode with Ragnar and Ivar being washed up on the shores of Wessex after the storm out at sea. This is clearly a throwback to how in season 2 when they first arrived in Wessex rather than Northumbria, he was blown there off course from a storm. So it makes sense to return that way again. But quickly we find out that it's not just Ivar and Ragnar that survived, they've got a few crew members that were ragged, tired, complaining, and don't really trust Ragnar at all because they've led them here and some such terrible things have happened. They probably believe the gods have forsaken him and they're doomed to fail. So in response to this, he kills them all, which really shows how his character has changed to be a lot more brutal. And Ivar has always been someone who can have this potential of being extremely brutal. And we can see that from this entire engagement. It's the kind of Ragnar that we saw way back when he first found out the news of the settlement being dead. And he strangled that poor man to death so he couldn't tell anyone. It was really the real dark side of him. The, the kind of Viking, really terrible side that we don't normally see in Ragnar because he's different from most of the other people and how they behave on raids. Now we see that he's not completely turned over his character when he he saves a little girl by telling him not to kill her and just let her like, kind of wander away after she was uh, picking those mushrooms. But I think the main focus of the storyline that we got so far was just him bonding with Ivor and really trying to bring out Ivor's full potential that he has noticed very quickly from him. I feel like Ragnar's already realized that Ivor's the person he needs to really achieve his revenge and he's the tool that can be used to conquer these lands. And I think that's the main reason people were confused about why Ragnar was trying to kill himself all the time and stuff. Because they don't understand that he's this person that really cares about his entire effect on the world and his fame and his image rather than his actual life. He desperately, more than anything, just wants to get his revenge and show that he can conquer this place. And he knows that the way to do that is through Ivar, so he doesn't care about himself. That's why he so willingly and freely just walks into their town and gets himself arrested. Also, I believe that Ragnar has this weird obsession with death, where it seems to keep eluding him, he doesn't know why, he needs to understand, is it the gods protecting him, is it something about him, is it his sons? He doesn't know, so he keeps tempting it to see what happens, and to find out the truth. And that's definitely going to be the main downside that sends him in a spiral, like it did when he was in Paris, and he tried so desperately to throw himself a roller to either achieve what he wanted to kill Rolo, or die doing so. And it just destroyed him that he wasn't able to die doing so. The main things I could pull out of Ivor from this episode was that he hasn't really realized his full potential yet. It was really Ragnar. Ragnar understands that this kid has everything it needs to be the pure, most badass Viking you could possibly get in history. And Ivor is still in the stage where he hasn't recognized his full potential. And that's something that either Ragnar will have to bring out of him or be forced as he's put in this really tense situation to either save Ragnar and escape himself. But it will be really interesting to see what happens with those guys in the next episode because I hope they really bring out Ivor a lot more because he's kind of been stubbornly staying to the same character. But once he fully embraces himself, he should be one force to be reckoned with. The next thing I want to talk about is the conflict over Kattegat with Asla and Lagatha. This felt way too straightforward, way too boring, with no real twist to it. I see that we could be getting a lot more of it next episode, but they really did really fail weak to me this episode. I didn't really enjoy the Kattegat stuff much at all. It just seemed really unimportant, really straightforward too easy to predict. We had this whole build up to it where they're like, will we kill Ragnar's sons? Obvious and unnecessary ruse to like imprison them before they go take Kattegat. Like they were already came all the way from Kattegat to the home and hearth of Lagatha. They didn't even use this really obvious bait with this girl to unarm them. Like it would be very easy to apprehend them at that point anyway. What was this whole point of adding this girl and with this really confusing relationship thing. It just felt really bad, every part of it, 
this episode. Like, I don't know. I liked the idea of this conflict. I saw it coming from a mile away, but I feel like they executed it poorly at so many points throughout this episode. Like, this episode wasn't bad as a whole, but just there were several things that really got me in this Kattegat conflict that didn't feel quite right, it didn't feel executed well at all. I did like the setup that she used by having the, the wall, shield, fight each other and the archers come up behind, but even that just felt like it was brushed aside with no real thought or impact from it. Like, they were going to win very easily anyway because they took them on surprise, all the soldiers were gone, like the brothers weren't even there. So it just felt like they added something on the icing top that didn't really change much at all. But I would like to see what this means for next episode when this conflict either gets resolved somehow or characters die off, because maybe that will bring some more weight and impact to it, because it really felt light and non important this episode there's no real investment in it it's like i didn't feel like there was anything i was going to lose here because you already shoved in the side of lagatha and just lagatha had everything set up to make her win now we move on to bjorn and his storyline which i must say was really good this episode i really liked how they flushed out his character and they reflect him how ragnar used to act when he was leading people in these different ventures and journeys for the most part he wouldn't talk to people he'd keep his plans in his head he would think through through and then he would act and it meant people were always on edge and understand how to do it they couldn't read him and then he could do things and understand things that made him achieve things way beyond what people thought he could do so at first he just rocks up with his giant fleet of ships says what up roller long time no see he looks like a fucking faggot but here's my plan we could tell right from the start even when he was imprisoned and took away he was just steering up roller knowing that he knew that Roller wouldn't imprison them and end up letting them go through. But the whole time he was just testing and poking him to see how he would respond, kind of like Ragnar would, which is really cool. At all times throughout this episode, we see that Bjorn's always strong, stern, unflinched. He knows Roller, he knows the people he's sailing with, he knows Vikings. He knows how it's to be treated and how it's to be done. He knows where he wants to go how to get there and he's going to do what he needs to do to get there probably the highlight for this episode was definitely the way he treated Rollo when he got on board he was acting like all smug and we're joining the go on adventure Bjorn's just like yep let's dunk him also the way he really liked it and like oh okay don't drown him okay get him up get him up and then Rollo just fucking throwing up and laughing it, it was definitely the highlight of the episode i can definitely see this feud between Rollo and the king halberg and his brother growing and it would end up being them betraying Bjorn at one point, I believe, and then it will be Rollor and Bjorn who have to team up and overthrow them, kill them probably, somewhere in this adventure. That's that's what I'm just thinking will happen so far. But in any case, I feel like the real pacing of the show is definitely going to start increasing a lot more next episode and going forward. We might not get as much of Bjorn next episode, which I hope they can fill up the gap in Kattegat and make that a lot better. But it looks like there's been a lot of cool stuff happening this season, which means we'll get better episodes with more stuff happening in it, and we can truly start to get knowing these new characters that we haven't really fully flushed out because of the time gap. So tell me what you guys thought in the comments section below, and make sure to like this video if you want to see more reviews on Vikings episodes. I might change up the format a little bit, might add some more things, make it smaller or longer, depending on what I think is possible. But I really need to get indication from you guys that you actually like these, or want to see more of them or not, because I can just roll it back and keep to the preview breakdowns, or just even Game of Thrones videos if no one's interested in these videos. And the main reason I have to do that is because the way that the algorithm changes now, it means that if you post a lot of videos that aren't super popular, Popularly with your fan base, that means less and less of your videos will be rolled out to describers even when you upload ones that they would want to watch. So my Game of Thrones videos, things that would be really popular, wouldn't even reach people just because they didn't watch previous videos that weren't their type, e.g. these Vikings videos. Thanks for watching anyway. I really enjoyed a lot of the videos I've been putting out this week and last week. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.